Hi, I'm Georgina. Welcome to my talk on the alteration characteristics of mineral systems in the Gaula Craton. Today I'd like to talk to you about spectral geology a bit and the data that's available on SARIG or on the National Virtual Core Library. And then I'll get straight into three case studies, which I've really only touched the surface on. As we all know, hydrothermal fluids cause the alteration of host rocks, producing alteration halos of hydrated minerals such as white micas, chlorates and biotite. Hylogger 3 uses spectral reflectance of infrared wavelengths to characterise downhole mineralogy. Each mineral is like a fingerprint with its own unique spectral signature. The great thing about spectral data is it is a non-destructive method of objectively and rapidly characterising the mineralogy in a drill core. No sample preparation is required and this method can be used to characterise large areas rapidly. So where do you find this data? Over 1300 drill holes are already available. If you hone in on SARIG, open the geoscientific data layer, under that you'll find drill holes and then the Highlogger layer. Zone into your region of interest and identify a drill hole where you can then view the spectral data without the specialist software. You can also download this data with the high resolution imagery. So let's get case, let's get into case study. So ISCGs are really quite fascinating and Louise Corriveau has described these facies associated with these diverse types of deposits really well. Now, I borrowed this graphic from her talk from Discovery Day in 2019. Generally, these deposits are strongly influenced by structure. However, they all have abundant iron oxides, either magnetite or hematite or both, and they're particularly well known for their hematite breaches. But they also contain abundant fine grain hydrated minerals, which are easily detected by spectral methods. The example I'm going to talk about is, of course, Olympic Dam, which is, has its own set of particular minerals that Alan Major and Kathy Oak have been unravelling in the spectral space. Common mineralogy includes white micas, dark micas, feldspars, chlorates and carbonates. But we can also detect changes in the chemical composition within these minerals. So the Roxby Downs granite is probably the most famous hilt of a sweet granite in the Gaula Craton. Here at Blanche 1, there's a strong component of aluminium rich white micas still dominating the clay mineralogy with carbonates and feldspars and they're dominantly a white microclime. The presence of some chlorite does suggest the influence of hydrothermal fluids in this core. However, where you see the white micro alteration just is not as intense as it is at Olympic Dam. Michelle Tappert analysed the white micas as the iron rich end member fengite. However, there is a spectral transition from shorter 2206 nanometers to longer wavelengths 2212 nanometers as the amount of iron increases, replacing aluminium approaching the ore zone, as you can see here in Allen's diagram with sericite and chloride. Dr. Alan Major then took it to the next level using thermal infrared data. He started by spectrally scanning a cross section from the deposit, where sericite decreases as iron rich chloride increases. He also tracked the change or presence of feldspar species using the spectral thermal infrared data, and you can quickly visualise the change from feldspar rich with potassium, feldspar and albite on the periphery with muscovite at a distance, as seen on Blanche 1, through to no albite and only potassium feldspar and then no feldspar associated with the hematite rich bridges. To date, we scanned initially a 14 kilometre transect of 20,000 metres and have now changed that to over 60,000 metres of drill core to spectrally characterise the deposit. This data will be released at Discovery Day later in the year. Interestingly, Vulcan, another ICG prospect about 30 kilometres to the northeast of OD, the white micro wavelengths change from longer to shorter in proximity to ore, almost the opposite of what is known at Olympic Dam. So, case study number two. When I think about epithermal systems, I think about the Champagne Pool at Ware Tapu in New Zealand. You've got this vuggy quartz, you've got bladed carbonates. I borrowed those images from Claire. 
Um, and most epithermal systems can be classified into three types. But today we're thinking about the low sulfidation, which is white microchloride, bit of smectite, some epidote, biotite, and of course, silica. The little green graphic shows the distribution of cores from the four kilometre squared Parkinson Dam prospect that have already been spectrally characterised using Hylogger 3. This data is already available to download. Quartz hematite, apatite, alunite, chlorite, sericite, white micas um, change. They have a strong iron end member finger decomposition. Feldspars are being altered to chlorite as the hydrothermal fluids move through the Corona conglomerate. I have plotted white micro wavelength versus depth of the white micro features and the feature frequency histograms which plot the depth of those wavelengths, allowing distinction between altered and unaltered rocks. Distally, less fluid movement uh, and there's a small depth of the white micro feature where the average wavelength is centred around 2216 longer wavelengths. As you approach, there's some fluid movement through the, through the conglomerate but there's a smaller depth of this white mica feature and the average wavelength is centered around 22 12 nanometers but in proximity where there's the most fluid movement and the greatest hydrothermal alteration the depth of this white mica feature is much larger and the average wavelength is again centered around 22 12 nanometers there's a decrease in felsic components of the conglomerate and changing wavelength from shorter to longer in the white micas is quite subtle, but the biggest difference is the depth of the spectral features towards the altered zone. You also get a decrease in muscovite, but an increase in chlorite as you approach this high alteration. Case study number three, base metals. Again, near the edge of this large igneous province, Menini Dam, Just did a quick search on Sarah for base metals, and this is what it came up with, all those brown dots. As you can see, there's huge potential for base metals across the state, particularly on the Gawler Craton. I zoomed in on the area of Menini Dam, and these are the holes that have been spectrally characterised and are available on Sarig already to download. In this mineralised hole, we've lost the scarn alteration minerals, and there's a significant increase in white markers with a decrease in the calc silicates such as talc and carbonate. MD32 is a mineralized hull. There is very little scarn alteration present in this core and there's some calc silicate alteration around the carbonate at about 450 meters. However, the bimodal distribution of white mica wavelengths could be the less altered rocks versus the altered volcanic clastics or noting the bimodal nature of the sample. This bimodal distribution of white markers has been used in orogenic gold systems in Canada to identify mineralized versus unmineralized materials. Unlike ICGs, where iron-rich chloride end members dominate, these base metal mineralized deposits are dominated by the iron and magnesium-rich chloride. As you can see, the great diversity of spectral data 
collected using HighLogger is freely available and provides high resolution downhole mineralogy and imagery. Mineralogy helps log lithology recognise alteration related to hydrothermal systems. There are thousands of holes scanned across Australia and accessible through the National Virtual Cord Library. Spectral mineralogy can be used to objectively log lithology and recognise alteration related to hydrothermal systems. Check out this data, it's already available.